what is going on everybody this is jason thrift trader thanks for joining us tonight a live show with an exclusive interview with storage auction pirate for those of you that know who i am and what i do i've been a reseller on ebay for 11 years and just recently started buying storage auctions uh just as a way to acquire inventory and uh this is the third week in a row that i've had successful storage auction buyers, YouTubers on the show to talk and discuss about their tips and tricks on what they look for when they're buying storage units. So tonight we have Michael, uh, also more better known as Storage Auction Pirate with us tonight. Michael, do you mind taking a moment and introducing yourself? Uh, yeah, um, my name is Michael and I am the Storage Auction Pirate. I've been uh, buying storage units for a long time now, and I have a YouTube channel where I basically show how I do it, my whole little story, my side of the business. That's awesome, Michael. Uh, good to have you, brother. Good to have you. Um, let me take a second and say hello to everybody in the chat. We've got Hustling the Hustlers here, Locker Nuts, uh, Kathy Johnson, Manuel. Manuel, Manuel, I'm sorry if I'm butchering that. I'm trying, I'm trying. Uh, Fortunate Adventures, Anita Phillips. What the hails is in the chat. Hey, guys, they were on last week. Awesome, awesome couple. Those guys rock. Uh, let's see, Mary Harris is in the chat. Salt, The Salt Princess, Donatella. Dude, chat's going crazy. Curious George is in here. What is up, George? D-Rup, Margaret Mims. You guys are amazing. Gary Barnes, thank you so much for coming in here tonight. It is a pleasure. It is absolutely a pleasure. Um, Michael, if you don't mind, uh, just tell us uh, a little bit about your family. Like, do you do you have uh, sons, daughters? Uh, what's going on there? Well, I actually have two children. Uh, my, my daughter, she's 17. She's actually the salt princess, the one who just said hello there in the comments. And I have a 15-year-old son. Uh, I have full custody of them, so they're pretty much with me seven days a week, seven nights a week. I'm a single father. Um, in the true words of being a single father, I'm by myself. So I have a full plate between a storage business, the YouTube, and parenting. It's basically a nonstop roller coaster for me. Well, I can imagine, man. I've got two daughters of my own, and uh, they're three and seven years old. And, man, they give me a run for my money. <laughs> Oh yeah. The good Lord thought he'd be funny and give me a house full of women. So now I got, I got that to deal with. <laughs> cool, Michael. So, um, how long, uh, how long have you been buying storage units? Is that really kind of where you get the majority of the stuff that you sell? Um, yes, I have been buying storage units for pretty much about 10 years now. And that is li literally all I have done for 10 years is uh, my revenue, whatever you, my job has been full time ever since the very first thing I bought. I pretty much quit my previous job after my first storage purchase. So you quit, wait, you quit your job after the first purchase, your first purchase of a storage unit. Is that right? I, Basically, yeah, I was a furniture mover for 15 years and I made money on the side by taking home kind of uh, free stuff. When you would move somebody, they usually have like a Goodwill pile and they would donate it. So I'd be like, yeah, I'm good. Well, you just give it to me. And I would sell it on the weekends for extra money. And in the Bay Area, when the big housing market crashed, people weren't moving as much and I wasn't getting free stuff. And I was like not able to go to the market. And one day I came back to my moving company and Dan Dotson, who does Storage Wars, he was hosting an actual auction at my moving company and it was everything spread out in the yard and stuff. And I decided to attend it because I do not sell stuff. And I ended up selling a pile of furniture with what he called a CD player uh, in the middle of it. And I bought it for a buck, one dollar. And that night was that CD player was really an Aragon amp. And I sold it for 600 bucks and I pretty much quit my career right then and there because I was like, I. The amount of time that it took me to take that one dollar to six hundred and what it usually took me in the, in the moving business to make that i was like it's a no-brainer oh yeah yeah a lot of people don't realize if you invest your money right reselling will give you much better dividends than even the stock market ever could think of doing <laughs> oh yes i totally agree with that 
That's awesome. So, so you've been self-employed for uh, 10 years now since, uh, since you've been buying storage units. I'm basically self-employed in every way. Cause that it's, I do make a little bit of money. Like I'll do picking and stuff like that, the flea markets, stores, garage sales occasionally, but 99% of my money is all storage units then reselling at the flea market and in the internet. That's, that's, that's crazy. That is, that's cool. That's crazy. Cool. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm self-employed myself. Uh, I've been buying, uh, I've been a reseller on eBay for 11 years. Haven't been self-employed that entire time. Just recently, uh, back in, I've been self-employed for a couple years, um, in prior years, but just went back to self-employment at the beginning of this year and I'm enjoying it. It's, it's a blast, but, uh, you know, I've been reselling for uh, 11 years on eBay and for the past 10 years, usually where I would get uh, stuff for resale is like garage sales, thrift stores, places like that. But recently I've started buying storage units and I got to, I got to say it's, uh, it's probably the single most uh, fun way of, uh, of acquiring inventory to resell because for me, you know, going through a storage unit, you get to learn you get to learn about someone else's past, someone else's life, you know, uh, just going through the storage unit. And I think that that's really kind of interesting to me. What would you say, Mike, is uh, is one of your favorite things about buying storage units? Well, like you were saying, I like to find out the story. It's fun to me to kind of piece together because you generally most storage units, unless it's like somebody's business or something of that nature, you tend to find out somebody's whole life. You see, like you see from when they were born till the time they lost that storage unit that they had sitting there. And that's always interesting because I myself have been in that position when I was a kid, we ended up losing everything in a storage and I know the whole process and uh, I like, I like studying, but really it's a thrill of opening a box. Like I, I think that's why I end up calling myself a pirate in the beginning of, of my channel because I'm hunting treasure. Like I, I look at it like a job and I, I obviously need to make money and feed my children and put a roof over the head. But sometimes uh, it becomes real. Uh, things become real edgy because uh, I tend to go crazy buying storage units. So I've bought in a lot of the wrong ones because I'm kind of a gambler at times. And this business, if you're a gambler, it's very dangerous because I got bought in units just to see inside. I buy units just literally to see inside of a box. If I see a 10 by 30 and there's one trunk there, I'll, I don't stop until I have that trunk. And it's cost me a lot of money. And Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, personally me, I like to gamble. I'm a gambler. I love poker. I've been playing poker for a long time. And I think that's, that might be one of the reasons why I enjoy buying storage units so much because it is a gamble. You never know, like, you know, buying a storage unit full of boxes, you never know what you're going to get, right? It's like a box of chocolates, but, uh, you know, uh, it, it, um, it's a, it's, it's a wild ride. It has been for me. I've only bought six storage units. Um, how many, how many storage units would you say, uh, you've bought? Um, it's going to be, it'll be really hard for me to truly give a number, but I speculated somewhere between like about a thousand and 1200 units probably. Wow. Okay. So here, you know, anybody that thinks that I was a pro, you got to think again, because this guy has got 994 more storage units on me. Okay. So, so this guy that... This guy knows what what's up, but he's been doing it for a long time. Ten years. You've bought a thousand, close to a thousand storage units in ten years. I mean, that's a. How do you move all that stuff so quickly? I mean, I, I look at it mathematically. I had to because I know I buy at least about generally about ten units a month, which is about one hundred twenty a year, and times ten years, it puts me over there. So I figure it has to be at least a thousand. But I spent, like I said. Uh, 15 years in the moving business. And before I was actually doing that as a full-time career for 15 years, I spent my entire childhood in the moving business. My dad took me on the road when I was like six weeks old on a move job to Oregon. So it's like I moving things is like a natural habit to me. Like I literally, uh, that's what I do best is sadly in my eyes is I move things really well. So I could, I could physically move a 10 by 30 by myself in like a day if I have to. Like oh, I can literally load it all in a truck and, and darn near unload it back in my warehouse if I have to. But I try not to do everything by myself because it's very backbreaking. 
Oh yeah, I can imagine. You know, moving a couch by yourself is not an easy task. I can imagine. So, uh, that's crazy, Michael. Well, do you where do you store the stuff? I mean, what kind of, what kind of storage situation do you have with this stuff? I mean, do you usually rent out the storage unit, or or do you just pull it all out of the storage unit and go straight to the to the flea market with it? How do you liquidate a lot of this stuff? Uh, the, the, I take each unit uh, differently because some units to me like are not worth at all coming back to my storage unit or eat, some units aren't even worth going to the flea market. There's some of you much more go right to the dumps with once you get them after you open up the boxes. But I personally have a thousand square foot storage unit at public storage in my town. I pay about four sixty six a month for it right now, which is extremely cheap in my area because the average ten by thirty around here rents for about three fifty a month. But I have somehow have got this thirty by thirty that is on deal for four sixty six. So that's what I've been storing in. That's crazy. That's crazy. So where do you where do you sell a lot of your stuff? Like, I guess you you sell on eBay as well. Is that right? I do sell on eBay. I've been slacking on it for a while. I think this, I go in spurts and the best times I ever have in this business are the years where I'm heavy on eBay and the years where I slack off or be kind of when things start to fall apart because I'm rushing everything at the flea market, taking half of what it's worth. Things that are not pretty wise to do when you're buying storage units full time. Yeah. And so the thing is, is like, okay, so you sell on eBay and you also sell at the flea market. Is there anywhere else that you might sell? Um, well, friends, there's a couple ways I, I try to have a couple garage sales a year, but that's just like doing a flea market, but I like Craigslist. That's always been my favorite Craigslist. I've tried, uh, offer up a little bit and let go and stuff, but I don't really have luck on those websites compared to Craigslist. I, I have somewhat luck on Craigslist. So that's my favorite for the internet and bigger pieces like dressers, dining tables, things of that bigger tools if I want to let it sit for a minute and it's not good enough for eBay, but too good for the flea market. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's, it's always good to have several avenues to sell your stuff. And the cool thing you were telling me earlier before we went live is that in your area, you've got like five, six or seven flea markets that are open seven days a week. Uh, literally I can like the Oakland flea market, which is like about a 30 minute drive for me. That's open seven days a week. Stockton, which is which one I go to, is open Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. Then there's also other Stockton flea markets that are Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. There's two other flea markets there. I mean, there's a, I can't even count how many are Saturday and Sunday flea markets I can go to within an hour. There's at least about eight to 10. And then there's the several that are open during the week. Like I can go to a, I can drive an hour and a half away to a Tuesday market that's pretty good. I could drive to Santa Cruz for an hour and a half away. It's a great Friday market. It's just, it's, there's a lot of markets around here. Hey, that, that, that definitely has to work in your favor because for me, like we have, I have two flea markets, but they're only open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So, I mean, both of them. And so if I want to get rid of something that's not eBay worthy or something, I either have to put it all in a pile in my driveway, take a picture of it and try to get rid of it on Facebook marketplace or, uh, or just, stack it up somewhere and wait for a good weekend to have a garage sale. That's, that's it. Or donate it. So those are really the only ways that I have available to me to get rid of stuff. Uh, and that's really cool that you have uh, at least an Avenue um, such as a flea market any day of the week that you choose. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, so where do you usually go to buy storage units? Um, uh, I go all over in my area. There's there's so many facilities on a day to day basis. I generally almost ninety nine point nine percent of the time is live auctions. I I rarely do online auctions. I have tried storage traders many times, but I, I'm very forgetful. I get so wrapped up in life. I half the time I forget that storage traders exist, and I can go on there and browse. And I don't like personally. I don't like auctions that everybody can see. Like real people out here hunting like when you're hunting storage units you want to be where nobody's at you want to be what nobody's seeing for the luck of it the uh, the chance that there's going to be few people there and when on storage traders anytime there's a good unit it's automatically going far higher than it's worth because everybody and their mother sees it they want to come from six hours away to pick that unit up and i don't like that aspect because 
it, the ego comes into play in those last few minutes, you know, like I want I watch Jeremy's video. He always says in the last five minutes, that's when people bid. And it's true. You watch that and if people's egos kick in and three thousand dollars more than you want to pay later. Someone's winning the unit. That's, it's not worth it because there's so many uh, units available. There's if you just wait another day, you're going to find a similar unit for like half the money in person. Yeah, I'm sure being, you know, in uh, California where you are, uh, there's probably storage unit uh, auctions going, uh, you know, ending every single day, uh, even online versus you could probably go to a live storage auction any day you want to. Is that right? Um, we are blessed in the Bay Area for the fact that there is an overwhelming amount of people. Therefore, there's an overwhelming amount of storage facilities. Therefore, it's like a total abundance of uh, units every day. Like in my area, there is like one, there's at least, I think, four to five auctioneer services, not like individual companies. And those companies are putting out auctions five days a week, somewhere within about an hour to an hour and a half of me tops. All five of those facilities are, or those auctioneers are going daily. So there could, there's probably an average, I think, of 15 to 50 facilities in a day I could choose from. But with public stores who does their own auctions and you have your things like security public stores, they do their in-house auctions as well where their district managers do it. So there's there's an abundance of opportunity, but there's also a tons of buyers in my area. It's just like supply and demand. There's so many buyers in this area. It's ridiculous. That is, that is absolutely, that's, that's cool. I've not, I've actually never, uh, uh, I've actually been to California. I've actually been to, uh, San San Francisco once and that's a beautiful city man it really is it's beautiful I think it what it's 50 60 degrees uh year round out there um well San Francisco can get pretty cold compared to where I'm at inland a little bit more but it's been like 35 40 in the morning around here which to me is freezing cold to some people they're like that's so warm but to me like my bones hurt uh at uh, 40 degrees I'm look I'm more of a wanting a 65 70 type of weather but yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about, man. Living here in Oklahoma, it gets, it's weird. Like the, the weather here in Oklahoma, there's a saying, you know, if you don't like the weather here in Oklahoma, wait five minutes. Cause it's going to be entirely <laughs> different. Uh, you know, it, it gets, it gets bone chilling cold in the wintertime. We get below, below freezing and we'll have ice storms. And then in the spring, we're going to have tornadoes. And in the summer, it's going to be so hot and humid. You can't even sit outside in the shade without sweating. So <laughs> I mean, that's just how it is. We get all four seasons here. I, uh, I, I don't like humidity myself. That's my least favorite favorite atmosphere to deal with is humidity. Dude, I'm telling you, like here, it could be like a nice, calm 70 degree, 70 degree day. But if it's humid, uh, you, you're going to be sweating. Not not even lifting a finger, just sitting outside sweating. <laughs> I was just going to say, you stand on the porch breathing and you're sweating. It's I can't handle that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. So uh, just out of curiosity, um, what would you say is the single most expensive item that you've ever sold out of a storage unit? Um, the single most expensive item I've ever sold was, I cannot remember the name of it for the life of me, but I bought a storage unit with uh, my old partner and his wife. We kind of did like a three-way split. And it was a wood shopping unit. Like we had a forklift and all the big tools, big band saws, table saws. And there was one machine in there that I sold for $26,000. It put the little laminate edge on the side of like a particle board bookshelf, you know, or something Ikea, that little just strip that went across the edge. It was about $158,000 machine. Let's put it on eBay. Some guy in Canada bought it, took it back up there, refurbished it. I think he sold it for about 50 grand. Wow. So you sold that on eBay? Was it a large piece of equipment? Uh, it was It was huge. I would say it was over 10 feet because it wouldn't fit across the flatbed trailer sideways. It had to go long ways. But luckily, that unit came with a forklift. So it just worked out that we were able to load it well. And I just slapped it on eBay out of like, I like to fish for things sometimes. That's what you kind of use eBay for. You get something crazy, you just put up there for a number. And, and there was actually interest. And this guy's job was, he was a huge, um, I don't know what the right word, I want to say commercial machinery type guy. That's what he did. He just bought and sold stuff like his own auction and yeah. he gobbled it up. 
That's that's really cool. So you sold a huge 10 foot piece of machinery on eBay. And I guess I, I suppose it went. Did it go freight or did you guys did the buyer arrange the shipping? How did the shipping work? Because I'm kind of curious about that. Yeah, he, well, I had him arrange everything because it was that's what he did for a living. Like he had trucking services who just, who just regularly pick things up because when you're ship when you're buying and selling huge equipment, you kind of already have people to deal with it. But it's not too hard to find a freight service to to ship bigger things. He just sent them right on out, and they backed in the storage facility. We forklifted it out, loaded it up, and then rented a flatbed to move our forklift to our storage unit. That's cool because at that point in time, you got to test out the forklift and made sure it worked out pretty good too. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a neat unit. It was so easy. It was only like eight things. And I actually bought that unit the month before for like 5200 and public storage canceled the bid because, and sometimes they have this over thousand rule where if it goes over a thousand, they stop and then they get clearance and then they have to auction it next month. And the next month we bought it for 3200 bucks. We even got we got to like nineteen hundred dollars less or something like that. Wow, that's that's wild. That's wild. So, uh, what uh, what would you say is your favorite find out of a storage unit? Not anything, you know. It doesn't have to be expensive or, or anything. But what would you say is like probably your most favorite find out of a storage unit? Well, I'm gonna have to say that's the safe that I had to twenty six thousand dollars, and I don't think I've ever had a feeling in my life other than my two children being born that has given me more single joy for that period of that <laughs> life. I've, I've, I've been chasing that dragon. That's actually kind of been a downfall to my business for the last several years is I'm chasing that dragon of trying. I can't, I feel like I'm stuck at 26,000. My both of my best items are 26,000 and I can't peak that number. And it's kind of like, I buy so many units thinking that's going to have the $27,000 item in it. And I end up with a bunch of crap that's 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 crazy that is absolutely crazy i mean all right so a lot of my viewers a lot of my subscribers they're they're ebay sellers that go to thrift stores and 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 you know did a lot of how of what i used to do in acquiring stuff but i mean here's the thing like guys can you imagine it's like it'd be like walking into a thrift store and buying some dude's blazer jacket okay taking it home and in the inside pocket finding $26,000. I mean, or buying a couch and finding $26,000. That's crazy. That is absolutely crazy. So was it just, what? where was the safe? Do you remember it like yesterday? Was the safe like a certain area of the, of the storage unit? Like how much did you pay for the storage unit? Where was the safe in the storage unit? Um, to, to be honest, when I bought the unit, I didn't see a safe. Apparently, some other people that were bidding on the unit, they were there that day. They said they saw the safe, but I really don't think they did because when I pulled it out of the unit, it was like under like a bath rug or something tucked behind a chair. But realistically, the unit was a five by seven or a five by eight. I didn't like it at all. I really would have never bought it on a normal day because it looked like a, it looked like a what I was profiled it as was an older guy had like a chair, a bunch of boxes and books. And it was like gifts that his family got him from the dollar store and stuff. I didn't like it. I had a cheap bike in the front, but I was first in line looking at the unit and there was a uh, what I call a newbie at the auction. He was a new guy. He, I think he watched Storage Wars. He thought he had a great job with a lot of money and he wanted to start coming to the auctions and bullying everybody who's out there doing this like as a living. And he used to carry this nice little black bag like he had like a hundred grand in it and he walked around in a suit at the office he had this real cocky attitude and he was shining his light in my eyes as i was looking at the unit and i solely bought the unit just because i wasn't gonna let him have it like 100 percent, i would have never bought it but he pissed me off shining his light in my eyes so i wasn't gonna stop i won the unit for eight hundred dollars eight hundred dollars for twenty six thousand, and all you gotta do is crack the safe yeah that's crazy. What was was it just you or did you buy it with a partner? How did that work out? Um, I actually had a partner at the time. He was not there when I opened the video, but if you or the safe, but if you ever listen to that video, uh the kid's mom was with me at the time. She's like, Call Scott, call Scott. That was my partner, and I kept calling him like I called him, like I texted him right away. I was like, dude, I just opened a safe and I think I found like three grand. And then I'm looking through the money, I was like, I think we got six grand. And then like 12 texts later, I'm like, we got $26,000 because like I've never really seen too much large piles of money. So I wasn't like, it caught me off guard. Like I wasn't sure how much was in there. At first I thought it was all ones and he put like 
it was like 3,000 with just ones on the outside. So if, like you'd be thrown off if you looked at it right away or something, it's hard to explain, but it'd be all 20s and just a one on each side. And that's, that's amazing. I, I thought it was empty. <laughs> that's, that's wild. That's absolutely wild. So, okay, $26,000 in a safe. Um, I'm certain if you've bought a thousand storage units, you've probably ran across many safes, uh, a, a bunch of safes in that time period, right? Uh, like I said, that unit's become a curse because every time I see a safe, a trunk, something with a lock, I, I've been chasing that dragon. I've lost more than I made in that unit trying to beat it. You know, like I can't even explain it. I, 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 I want every unit with a safe or anything locked because I want, I feel like it's in there again. And that's yeah. it. That is very dangerous. Yeah, I can I can imagine, you know, being uh, coming from a background, you know, a lot of people don't know this about me, but one of my past jobs, I was a blackjack dealer at a, at a casino and I dealt blackjack for two years of my life. It was probably one of the most fun jobs I ever had. And um, something I realized was when someone wins a lot of money at one time, it, it it's almost like they they kind of something clicks in their brain where they forget about the losses and always focus on the wins. And it just kind of keeps them, keeps them going. But, uh, uh, the, you know, the thing with the thing with storage units is if you buy, right, if you buy, right, it's kind of, it, it could be kind of difficult to lose on a storage unit. Would you say? Well, I kind of count how many I've lost on and I've lost on 33 units so far in all the storage that I've bought. But that doesn't mean that some several of the units had much profit. Like if I spent all this amount of money and I just made like a hundred bucks, I consider that not a loss. But if it takes you three weeks to get to that hundred, that's still a loss in my eyes because I wasted so much time trying to, to get ahead and time is more valuable than that little bit of money. You could have bought 10 more units with better, better probabilities. And my work, First loss ever, I thought was going to be a gold mine. It was a 48 foot container full of nothing but brand new boxes. It was an exercise equipment. It was like this little wind thing. You go like this back and forth called the wind, wind, uh, dosho wind injector or something. I lost $5,600 on that unit. Man, I could have sell $108 after about four months. Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, you know, if, if 33 units is all you've lost on, I'd say you're doing a fine job at this gambling business. I can tell you that right now. Um, so guys, if you're not subscribed, we've got 95 people watching. Thank you so much for being here guys. And if you're not subscribed to storage auction pirate, Melissa W's put it in the chat. I've also put it in the chat. Uh, let me put it in the chat right now. Uh, Guys, definitely go subscribe to his channel. This this is amazing. If you guys have any interest at all in buying storage units, uh, to resell the contents, to make profit, to possibly even become your own boss, work from home, whatever, or maybe a little extra income, pay off the house early, whatever your intent is, definitely subscribe to the subscribe to Storage Auction Pirate because this guy's got, like he said close to a thousand units under his belt. This guy knows the business better than almost anybody. So, uh, Michael, um, now we've established you live in California. We've established that the cost of living there is outrageous. Um, we've also established that, uh, or we haven't established, but what would you say is kind of an average cost of buying these storage units in auction where you live? That is a hard one to really, uh, it's hard to get an average because there it's it's all over the board. But units in in my area go for a dollar, which is literally there might be a car battery in there. Somebody's going to recycle it for seven bucks, or it's got a couple bags of clothes that look obviously dirty. But I've, I've seen units recently go up to seventy one hundred dollars. That's the most expensive unit I've seen in the last like ninety days, probably. It was wow. a ten by twenty or ten by twenty five, like ten feet tall of boxes. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's wild. I mean, I haven't been in this business long enough to really establish a good idea as to what the going rate is here. But my most expensive unit that I've bought was only like six hundred dollars. That's including one month's rent and including the ten percent fee because I bought it online and uh, and the taxes and all of that. So, I mean, I haven't been you know I didn't gamble no like five six grand on a unit. I haven't done that yet. 
Um, but I don't think around here, I don't think that they really go for that much. But again, it all depends on what you see. So um, it, it's crazy what they what they can go for. My the most expensive that I personally bought was with my uh, good buddy, the storage stalker. We bought two units twice last year, same owners had two units and we spent 7400 twice last year on two different sets of units and that's my personal and most expensive units i've bought but they spent took so long to make money it's they're not in my opinion expensive units aren't worth it because you're going to spend generally weeks to a month plus just to get back to even and i like a storage unit where you come in and you find one item that pays for it and everything else is profit that is like the best strategy in my eyes expensive units you tend to be you lose so much time that you the value in what you're getting doesn't exist because I, I, how do I want to explain that? Uh, you lose a lot of time. You have to sit there and market everything, post, et cetera, et cetera, and you miss being at more auctions, getting better deals with a lot higher profit margin in a faster amount of time. Yeah. Um, so, so what would you? That kind of brings us to another another question. Um, do you really kind of focus on, do you value, how do you value a storage unit when you're looking at one, the, the couple of minutes that you have to really analyze and profile a storage unit, what are you looking for? This, the hardest thing for me to ever explain is why and how I buy a storage unit. And I don't think that, uh, I don't even think about units half the time. I, I feel like I have this weird intuition to a storage unit. I, I spent, like I said, pretty much most of my childhood and half of my natural adult life moving furniture. And I'm a kind of a person who studies people. So when I spent 15 years packing people in and out of their homes, the, every aspect of their life, from their dresser to under their bed to their closet, I'm getting their storage units. I kind of like, when I look at a storage unit, I picture the person. I like, I see the person who owned that unit and I, 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 I get an energy more than I do look at this like each item i don't like look and be like that's a hundred that's 200 i go for what my gut thinks the intent are it's it's so hard to explain but that's not something i suggest the average person do because it's very risky and if you're not uh, comfortable with living with your life on the edge it's not wise to run your business that way yeah i can, I can understand that so so really you just kind of go with your gut feeling. I mean, is there just like maybe like one thing you might see and it, and it clicks in your head like, hey, that's most normal people don't have that or. or it, just, it really depends on what kind of unit it is. There's set, there's different kinds of units. There's a unit you look at it and you're like, you know, I'm going to make this. There's units where you're like, that has a lot of intent. There's units where you're like, I wouldn't buy that for a dollar. I mean, there's so many different kinds of storages. So it really, it varies, but. I bought a unit before where like I didn't really see nothing in the unit, but I had to have it. I bought a unit one time it was a five by five. I paid twelve hundred bucks for it. There was only like fourteen boxes or something or twelve boxes, but my my left knee was shaking like I've never had it shake, and I feel like my body kind of has like a precious metal detector, and it was just shaking. <laughs> I told my partner Scott, I was like, I'm buying this. He's like, whatever. I bought it for twelve hundred bucks and. We scrapped like 3,200 in silver. We sold a, a painting for 6,200 or $6,000 out of there. It was weird, but it's like my body felt what was in there. And I can't explain how that to anybody. Oh man. I, I, I know what you mean though. I really do. Like, I don't know. I feel a little spoiled in the storage auction biz. You know, like I said, I've only bought six storage units and I plan on continuing this for a long time, but I've got to overcome some struggles that I'm having. Um, not, they're, they're, they're not financial. They're, they're just the simplicity of like, I'm trying to figure out what's the fastest way to like sort through this stuff, figure out what's worth money, what's not worth money. Because like I said, the past 10 years, all I've dealt with was mostly clothing, shoes, and accessories. And now you go and buy a storage unit and you have everything under the sun potential that you're looking at. And, uh, and now you have to value this stuff and coming from somebody that, you know, I ran across my last storage unit. I got really fortunate. I found like, I paid $600 for the storage unit. I found 50, uh, a little over eight ounces of gold. It ended up being uh, mostly 14 karat gold, uh, sold the gold, 
uh, for about 55, a little over $5,500 like that. Just two minutes from me. Um, and, uh, 25 boxes of comics. And, uh, some of them are like bronze age, uh, bronze age comics. I've got like the first four of teenage mutant Ninja turtles and, uh, several other key issues. And, uh, this person was obviously just a, a, a collector, you know, and, uh, I got lucky. I really did, but I had a feeling like in the middle of the storage unit was this bronze statue. I'm actually going to get it real quick. Cause I want to show you, uh, uh, this thing, I know this, this dude was staring at me in the middle of the storage unit. And he just said, buy me whatever it takes buy me. And I was just, I looked, I took one look at that and I was like, you know, most people don't have this kind of thing. And it just dawned on me, like, I have to have this unit. And uh, it turned out all right. <laughs> I would definitely gamble on anything I see bronze in because bronze gives good intent. It's just somebody who has a bronze statue. It, granted, it doesn't mean it's a valuable one. It's just that you have to pick and choose what you're willing to gamble on, what you feel comfortable with, you know? Sure. I mean, I think, uh, you know, uh, something that uh, Jeremy said during his interview is, uh, and Wade as well, you know, um, they like seeing um, things that aren't necessarily for survival. They want to see expended, uh, expend, what's the word I'm looking for? Expendable income, like items that people buy just for, just for the sake of having, because at that point, the, the sky's the limit what's inside that storage unit. So I call those like keeping up with the Joneses lockers, people who just, they have to have something better than their neighbor or the person they're working with. And then everything's just off the, off the hook over the price, over the top, you know, like those, yeah. but those, are, those are far and few between in my eyes. Sometimes where, where I'm at, there's a lot of units, but there are a lot of garbage tweaker units, people who just, did a dump run. You go to public storage, you got the dollar special. So for 52 bucks after paperwork, you got a 10 by 30 for the month. People fill them up full of trash, walk away, save themselves thousand dollars in dump fees. So right. it means. Yeah. And I guess by law, you know, they have to auction off every single storage unit, regardless of what's in it. If someone owes, uh, uh, you know, back, back rent, they have to auction it off. Is that right? Uh, pretty much anybody, once they go into lean, it has to be auctioned unless the auctioneer feels comfortable that no one's going to bid. If it looks like, if it's like a pallet and an empty box, they're obviously not going to auction it for legality reasons, but they'll take a photo of it and do their little thing they have to. And I see that a lot of public storage, but the most companies, they will have one of the auction services try to auction it off. And then after if it doesn't, then it's their job to dispose of it. Cause that's how like a public storage, like when you go to the auction, it's got a no bid. They have to have three of us who signed in actually sign that it didn't sell as like a, a backup measure to prove that they did attempt to sell it. Okay. Yeah. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. So do you usually sort through the unit there at the storage unit, throw all the trash in the trash and kind of sort what you're going to, what you're going to keep to resell online versus what you're going to sell, you know, at the, at the flea market, where do you typically sort this stuff? Most of the time I, I root the boxes at the storage facility and I kind of do my filming and everything there, but um, I don't really uh, take things to the dump till after I've gone to the flea market. My flea market is the one I go to in Stockton. I have guys that actually clean up for me at the end of the day. So like my trash generally I unload and then when I'm ready to go, I just close the trailer and drive off and they, clean clean up everything from there and um everything sells there for the most part i have dollar sales like I, i'm a quick seller like when i go to the market i show up at five i unload i put some good stuff over here most of stuff goes in a pile and then by like nine ten o'clock in the morning i'm everything a dollar then free and then i drive off and people will gobble up they people need stuff i like i like to it's uh, you need to make money in this business, but if you want to find more boxes, you want to look through stuff, and it's more about sometimes the the hunt to you, which is once again really risky if you want to make money to do what I do my way. But I'm trying to get to the next unit, and I like helping people out. I feel like 
giving stuff away to people who are actually going to use it, not necessarily to resell it, but they they might need a, a new couch that no one else is going to buy, or they might need a new set of cups, whatever, whatever the, the thing is. I like getting it to other people because I feel that helps bring me good energy because there is a lot of negative energy behind this job we do. A lot of people look down on it like we've stolen people's stuff, you know, how dare you do that? And then there's the factor that somewhere in the world is that person's a little sad from it and that energy gets to the universe. And I am very weird about energy. So I try to do anything I can to make myself feel comfortable with that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, uh, the only way that, that you're going to, you know, the more storage units you buy, the more chances that you have of, of really kind of striking uh, $26,000 in a safe. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. So, and the only way to buy a bunch of storage units is to liquidate as you go along. And if, if you don't, you know, sometimes if you want to, like for instance, what I'm dealing with right now, this storage unit that I bought, there's just like, there's quite a bit of decent stuff. And, uh, for me to sell it all, you know, for, you know, on online, I have to, I have to make room for it. And as it stands right now, um, I'm looking at probably at least a couple more weeks before I even buy another storage unit. And, um, I'm already itching to buy one. It's just a matter of time and, and space. So that's a, that's really, really cool. So guys in the chat, do you, uh, type, I'm going to pull a Wade's venture here. Okay, guys. Uh, type one, if you've ever bought a storage unit in auction, type two, if you never have. I'm kind of curious. And while we're doing that, if you guys have any questions for Storage Auction Pirate, now would be the time to ask them. And um, here we go. What? That's weird. Uh, one, okay. I'm sure a bunch of you guys have bought storage unit auctions. That's weird. Kind of a mixed bag, isn't it? Yeah. Zero. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, it is a mixed bag. About 50-50, it looks like. That's crazy. One too many, Manuel said. That's funny. I noticed a few people asked, like, if my the background on the unit with the safe in it. And in my opinion, that unit, the person passed away. It seemed like somebody who went and went to work, they cashed a check, and money was in sequences. Like, five bills would be in a sequence. They'd be kind of fresh, like he cashed a check, got it from the bank, set it there. And then it was weird, but it seemed like somebody just saved that money, never wanted to use a bank. That would make sense to me. Um, I can't imagine. Well, I say I can't imagine someone uh, defaulting on a storage unit with twenty six thousand dollars sitting right inside of it. But again, you know, the thing is, is with this my most recent storage unit, the person the person that owned the storage unit is is still living, and um, I had spoken to uh, the manager at the uh, facility, and they just told me. They told me that uh, that she simply uh, she just didn't pay, and uh, it's kind of a it's kind of a sad deal, honestly. Um, this is where uh, this the nature of this business. There's two sides to it. You have people that absolutely absolutely despise uh, you know people that purchase storage unit auctions, like you were saying, and and uh, Jeremy, what the hell's had uh, had made mention to me that there's there's a lot of people that have lost things in a storage unit auction and they just don't, they don't like what we do. But at the end of the day, it's going to be auctioned off regardless. And someone is going to buy it. Um, it's not really, you know, it's not, it's not our fault at this point, you know, and you have to realize at the end of the day, it's either someone else is going to buy it and just, or, or, or it's going to get thrown in the trash and at the end of the day, we're going to find a good loving home for all of this stuff. Someone that's going to use it. Um, and a lot of the personal belongings do get taken back uh, to the, to the facility and handed over to the, uh, the rightful owner of that stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword, you know? Um, 
it, it's good for us. It's good business. Um, at the end of the day, the storage unit is uh, the storage unit company is in this business to make money. And if somebody doesn't pay up, they have to recoup. Uh, they have to recoup their losses somehow, some way. So, I mean, that's just how it goes. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I, for for the, for, I, I kind of look at it from a cold aspect myself. But if people didn't have too much of a consumer mentality, they probably wouldn't have a storage unit they lost in the first place. That's why storages exist because the average person has too much stuff. They they don't know how to let go of it. Maybe somebody passed away and they kind of feel like, oh, uh, Aunt Betsy died. If I throw her stuff away, I don't care. Or somebody, somebody died and they had to sell the house and the, usually the kids don't want the stuff. So they put it in a storage unit so they can hurry up and sell the house. Or People are so down in their luck that like they don't have a home and they're exhausting their resources that they have to help save everything to keep $1,500 and stuff in a storage unit after paying it for four years and coming out the pocket $9,000 on, you know, $1,800 and stuff. It's yeah. storage units, in my opinion, they probably shouldn't exist on the level they do because people have just too much stuff. But then again, without that, we wouldn't have a job right now. So. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, when it's someone else and when it's someone's rainy day, it's someone else's sunny day. And uh, and we've all been there. You know, I know I have. I've been so I've been this close to foreclosure in my in, in my life. And I've I mean, I'll be the first to tell I'm not I'm not ashamed of it. I'll be the first to tell you I've filed bankruptcy in the past. I mean, and that's that's where it is. You know, when you live uh, when you live by paycheck to paycheck. OK. And then something happens and you lose your job or you get laid off or, you know, whatever it be. And you are relying on that paycheck to make your bills happen. Guess what? There's going to be bills you simply can't pay anymore. It just happens. It happens to all of us. Uh, if it doesn't happen to you, you're fortunate, you're lucky and, uh, and count your blessings because, uh, it happens. It happens to a lot of us at one point or another in our lives. We will we will see the day when we can't make two ends of a rope meet together. And it just happens. Yeah, that well, that's very scary too in a business like the storage business because uh, you can very easily dig yourself into a hole if it's when you run your own business. You need to be on top of things. And like me, I started off at the bottom of this business. Like I said, my I answer one of the questions here. Somebody asked how much my uh, first unit was like I started this business on a one dollar unit I was in a bad place then I was low uh, behind on bills etc cetera, etc cetera. and I quit my job to do this with the gamble and I went got kind of successful slowly and then I kind of messed up a little bit and then I started again after I lost some things and I built it up and then I found that safe we opened up a business and I ended up 35 grand in the hole from that uh, opening up the store basically after finding that 26 grand. So then I had to work my way back up, paying off all that debt. And it, it goes up and down if you don't uh, work on it. It's a, it's a scary job if you're not on top of it. That's all I could say. Cause I'm in a kind of a crunch myself right now because I kind of have been slacking in certain areas of this job. And I brought it on myself basically by not doing things to the best of my ability lately. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, sometimes, you know, this community, this reselling community is huge. And a lot of times uh, I'm most productive when I've got people, like-minded people, like coworkers around me, you know, it kind of creates a, a bit of a, a, a lean on me type deal where, you know, we, we, uh, we hold each other accountable. And uh, that's a, that's something in this business, in this line of work, when you're self-employed, there's nobody, you know, there's nobody telling you that you got to get up and do this and do this and do this today. Uh, it's really self-motivation is the only way to get it done. And uh, that's something that uh, if you want to be self-employed, uh, if, if the, I'll tell you what, my family and my bills motivate the heck out of me. It's either I do it or nobody's going to do it. So. Cool. It, it's all all the weights on your shoulders and if you don't motivate yourself like i said like like i saw how i kind of ran my business the last year as i was very uh unmotivated due to things going on in my life personal matters with uh an ex and so forth and i kind of really didn't focus on my job enough and i'm really financially paying the price from 
not doing exactly what I know I should be doing and just being like, that's all right, we'll worry about another day. And then in this business, if you don't have like, if this is not just like a side job or you don't have like kind of like a nice little retirement before you get started, if it's everything and you started with next to nothing, you you got to be on top of it. it it's not for uh, the weak at heart. You have to really hustle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's a definite fact. Um, so, all right, guys. Uh, let's see if if anybody does anybody well actually somebody in the chat had asked um how long have you been uh uh a uh, a vegan or are you, are you vegetarian i didn't even see that question oh uh, yeah i I've, I've been a, a vegetarian for the most part again since january and then like last year i i didn't do it though like the last five months of the year but the first seven months of the year i was complete vegetarian I kind of go uh, back and forth, but I try not to eat meat. I don't really, it's not very healthy for us these days, the way that it's raised and the corn that goes in it. I, I've seen stuff where it's the one of the lead causes of cancer and diabetes. So I just kind of try to stay away. And I seem to feel better from doing that. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask is, you know, is, is it, are you seeing any changes? Like, are you, are you what's the what's the purpose is it just to stay healthy i mean is it or have you lost weight recently i mean what uh what made you change well i'm not gonna lie the reason why i originally became a vegetarian was kind of to impress a girl that was what got me doing it she was like i'm a vegetarian she showed me a video I'm like cool i'm gonna do that too so i can see if i can impress you it didn't work but nonetheless <laughs> i felt better after doing it so i started doing i like i also i won't drink like dairy milk i only drink like almond milk and stuff and i noticed a lot of uh health wise I feel better and when I went back to eating meat same thing I started to feel I don't feel as good I just I, I'm not a vegan I'm only a vegetarian like I'll eat the uh, eggs I'll eat dairy milk if I have to like absolutely I call it pus milk because there's so much pus inside of a gallon of milk I, but uh, I don't I don't uh, I eat cashew <laughs> milk and uh, almond milk stuff like that I love milk don't say that don't say those things <laughs> Man, I had uh, I had uh, pulled uh, pulled barbecue chicken sandwiches tonight, and it, and they were great. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I, I miss I miss so I, I trick I do things to kind of circumvent. Like I use something called Nepalis. It's a cactus, and it has a very interesting texture. Like if I cut it in like a little piece, like a hamburger patty, basically, I feel like I'm eating a hamburger. It tastes just like it. I'll cut it up like a sada for tacos. I'll use it in all the manners in which. That I would normally use meat, but I put Nepalese in there. Okay, is that similar to like? Is it anything like um, uh, what? What am I trying to think of? Um, I forget it. I can't remember. It's a it's a vegetable that they use a lot in uh, in vegetarian food to like replace meats. Jackfruit is one they use a lot of. That's okay. pretty healthy. A lot of people use. Um, uh, cauliflower is very big. Like I tried to eat soy because I found out after becoming a vegetarian and I was working out kind of heavily at the time. For a man, soy is bad because it lowers your testosterone, which helps give you energy and replenish your muscle. And I was like on an all soy diet, and I started one like, why am I so weak? So I tried to get any soy. Yeah. That's kind of not the healthiest thing for a guy as a vegetarian. Yeah, that's that's what uh, that's what I was I was looking for was the word soy, and so. Well, um, you know what? I think, Michael, I think we should maybe screen share onto uh, Storage Treasures, and we'll take a few um, a few zip codes from the chat and maybe do a little uh, soul searching on storagetreasures.com. What do you think, brother? Uh, I'm willing to give that a try. Uh, I think I can handle that. Okay. Um, yeah, just uh, we'll just screen share, and then you can go to Storage Treasures. And I will, uh, I will give you uh, some uh, zips. Here's a, here's a couple already, actually. Oh, I hit the screen share button now, right? Yeah, just hit the screen share, and then I'll lock it on your screen. Let's see here. And we're, and then is it working now? Yeah. All right. Okay. Cool. So. We've got, let me scroll up here. The very first zip is 73115. This is a little close to home. 
Seven three one one five. You said. Yeah. All right. This is from Frontier Flipper. He's a home baser for me. Any particular amount of miles? Or we just put in like twenty five miles, and then. Uh. We'll just, uh, yeah, we can do 25 miles uh, on this one. The next one we'll do 100 miles because it was requested. All right. First one here is a 10 by 10. Cool. And just kind of, uh, if you don't, uh, Michael, let's just, uh, I guess, think out loud when you're looking at these things. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of something to even say about this unit, but I personally would not buy a unit like this on your if I was at the auction, I'd have to be absolutely out of merchandise and just want to make some money for that day. I would buy it then. But if I was just, if I was really trying to think I'm going to make money, I don't see nothing of real value there. Okay. The standard stuff and you see coat hangers, you see laundry detergent, you see garbage can, you see bags with cheap dolls. Like this just looks like a, a lot of low end items to me with very minimal intent. Okay, let's go back to the search results and see if if you can just scan through there and pick one that you think might be interest uh, might be interesting to you, if there are any. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. If there's not, if there's not any that that may interest you, maybe we'll increase the mileage. This one has this one intrigues me slightly because I like uh, dust and I see dust. It doesn't scream lots of great things in the front, but I, I like things with bio cabinets. I like I like dust, and I see dust, and I almost see rat poop on the bottom. They're not quite, but that's one of my right. favorite things in storage units, rat poop, because it means a lock, a lock has been sitting for a long time. Well, so why do you like dust? Is that the same reason? Uh, basically, yeah. You can almost tell the age of a unit sitting there by – by the level of dust and i want something that hasn't been touched and looked in that's why personally for me my favorite units to buy are a dead people because for one they don't come back to complain about their unit and two they most likely haven't been in the unit to pull something out and i don't feel the energy is as bad on something when the person doesn't exist anymore versus somebody who's sitting there crying wishing that they had one more chance at their storage yeah, I mean, that's, you know, okay, guys, I know that that might sound a little harsh, but at the end of the day, I mean, it's reality. When we die, all of our belongings, unless our family wants them and takes care of them, all of our belongings are going to be gone. You know, at the end of the day, it's all material and we can't take it with us to the other side. So this, you know, reminds me of somebody who uh, does some type of work, like they were doing woodworking or something. You see what it looks like. Oh, molding or floorboards or something there you see like a workbench you see the pass load staple gun there the file cabinet the tool type thing so you see a safe so that like even though the safe's open i would still have to buy that to look in that safe where's that safe at i don't know i'm pretty sure it's a safe right there on top of the file cabinet oh yeah 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 i see it now wow Which, you can see that it's open but i would I couldn't walk away from that. I would have to buy that for some amount of money if it wasn't super ridiculous. Now, this says non-lean unit manager special. Does that mean anything at all? Oh, that right there tells me I wouldn't buy it then. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> that uh, yeah, I didn't even see it until Aaron. Yeah, Aaron Young already tell, tell you what's in there. I would have called him up and be like, hey, can you tell me what was in the safe that you uh, already went in? Yeah, right. Yeah. Didn't even see that. Oh, darn. Okay. Man, these are ending in what? Fifteen hours? Tomorrow? Three? Uh, well, yeah, Neither. that was fifteen hours. I, I sorry, I scrolled up already. Yeah, no, no, no. You're fine. Uh, all of those. These are within like rock throwing distance of me almost. Oh, okay. This type of unit. I, this. This looks like a tweaker unit. <laughs> It That's looks like it's been staged, if you want my honest opinion. Um, I can I can potentially see that because you see, like, hey, we got a file cabinet uh, with the drawers, but no file cabinet. Yeah. And it just looks all meticulous, meticulously laid out. I don't know. That's strange. It's hard to say because, like, this is 
black, like I said, it's what I call a tweaker unit. Uh, tweakers like putting their things in just random boxes. This, this is exactly what I think that would be. You see speakers that don't look like they work. You see part of this. And I don't know. That's what it screams to me. But I, I could see where it can potentially be staged because I bought a unit the other day where I swear, I don't know who did it, but I think somebody put a whole front half of somebody's stuff in the front of what was a business in the back. So strange mm. things happen at auctions. Wow. That's not something I would buy at all. And I see it at a hundred bucks like that. Personally, I would not really, I would not buy that. I'm curious to know if this is another, okay, no, that's not another oh. manager special. That's, that's interesting, but see how the very front of it, it's all, it's all like meticulously laid out. Uh, it just looks, it's so interesting to me why well, they see, like, like you see the radio looks like he, you know, he's doing something and he wanted to listen to some music. He's, sure. I don't, I don't know. It's hard to say. Yeah. Yeah. looks like a little, uh, cool cigarette sign or something right there on the left by the handle. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't know why I'm seeing that. Looks like the word cool. Man. Oh, you know what? It does. It does. Huh. Oh, see the flea market a the A's right there? The A frames in the back corner there? Those are the little uh, A frames you put up and you put your plywood across to make a flea. Oh, market. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Could be a seller. Saw horses? Yeah, they're like saw horses. That's the word I'm looking for. I don't know why I said hay frame. Um, frontier this is frontier flippers zip code he said i had to implant the buying bug because you said you weren't buying for a couple weeks <laughs> yeah that's funny you try a different zip code sure yeah let's do that um yeah if you don't see anything there just right off the top that you think that might pique your interest that you would want to uh look into we can move on to another zip this one that kind of looks almost intriguing this thing's 25 days away Oh dang! And it's already at three hundred and ten dollars too. That has some slight intrigue to it. Do you like anything that has a front load washer and dryer in it? I mean, you can depending on where you are uh, with the supply and demand, that could be anywhere from one hundred to four hundred bucks based on condition and brand and everything. Because there are some low end front washers, but I I like having nice items. Um, I tend to stay away from units where the people have uh, children because. Uh, I have children and I know what it's like when you have children, you don't always get to spend it on a lot of toys. You spend it on the children. So when I look at a unit, a person has like, you see the baby boxes of diapers and all the stuff. You, I tend to believe that people don't have a lot of treasure in those units because the average person is spending their money taking care of their kids. So they're not having a whole bunch of fancy gadgets unless they're one of those, what we said earlier, like keeping up with the Joneses type. But I tend to stay away from uh, children, units with a lot of children stuff because um, that's just the way I see it. Yeah. And, and coming from, you know, a, another guy with kids, uh, especially young kids, I can tell you one of my biggest mistakes in life was buying a brand new living room uh, furniture set <laughs> right before having children. That was probably one of the biggest mistakes I ever made in my life because my uh, three thousand dollar couch set is now worthless because it's just plum ruined. <laughs> That's so true. Uh, but like, for example, when I see something like this, I'm usually intrigued by things like this because I automatically presume elderly people and elderly people have old stuff, and that's one of my signs. I like when I look in a unit. I prefer to buy an elderly person versus a younger person. Yeah. So I generally presume you see stuff like that as an elderly person, but it doesn't mean doesn't necessarily mean that's true. Somebody could have just hurt their leg or their hip or something. But yeah. you want to like when you're profiling, you try to picture what the person actually. Sure, sure. All right, let's uh, let's try a different zip code. Uh, right. This one, um, the person requested we do a hundred mile radius. The zip code is three four four two nine. Three four four two nine. Yes, sir. Three four four two nine. A hundred miles. Where are we at here? That's uh looks like Florida. Florida. Disney World. Nice. What do we got here? A 10 by 15 for 200 already. Does that say 50 minutes to go? 50 minutes. Is that what we that says? We should all team up and buy it now. Everybody <laughs> <in> Florida. 
I think it said 50 minutes. I'm not sure. Yeah, it does. It does yeah. say 50 minutes. They it don't ends have... at 8.59 p.m. Oh, there's a princess house. That's always nice. Looks like an older radio there. I have, I swear on everything, that is my exact nightstand, that blue thing right there. I have that nightstand next to my bed. I got it out of a unit with Alex we bought a couple months ago. I would have to buy that just because I only have one and I need a matching one. Uh, that's funny. I bet I bet you don't. There's not. There's a lot of things that you use around the house on a daily that you don't have to buy anymore because you just get the stuff out of storage lockers. Oh, I haven't bought a bar of soap in five years. I don't buy plastic bags. I don't buy aluminum foil. Uh, all sorts of things that I can potentially save. Uh, as being the, the mother inside of me stores all these things. The mother um, inside of me. I got to give a quick shout out to Jay Craft because uh, Jay Craft, Bolo Rama in the chat. Yes, it is a great show idea because the gentleman came up with it. He asked me one day privately, he's like, hey, why don't, why don't we go live on uh, my show? And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and and we go through storage unit auctions together live and i we did that and uh the cool thing was i thought it was such a good idea that i started doing it on on, on my show as well and uh this is a this is an amazing idea i think a lot of people benefit from this especially coming from guys with experience us just talking through it um really gives a lot of people ideas on what they can look for uh to really score on a storage unit if they ever decide to, to buy one and uh, Jay, thank you so much for the $2 super jet. Thank you so much. He said, you're cheating on me with another thrifter. I see. <laughs> well, it's good to have a variety of opinions too. Cause in this business, there's no, there's so many different ways to do it. And everybody's, somebody's going to appreciate one person's strategy more than the other. Cause that's the way they're going to want to do it. That style. So it's very yeah. helpful to have different opinions. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't usually like lean units, but this one for the right price would be worth money because it seems like there's a lot of brand new clothes and it's only at $140 with two days and 22 hours to go. Now, what does it mean when it says it's a private seller? I mean, someone obviously staged the unit to sell the unit and all of its contents. Does that mean anything to us? Well, I, I, you don't have to necessarily believe that they staged it. I mean, that's a good presumption, but it could just be their actual storage unit and they're tired of paying on it. But okay. I do know that recently somebody in my storage business showed me a unit they had where I was at that they bought a bunch of units and then put some of the stuff in there to make it look all fancy. He's like, I'm selling it on storage treasures. And I kind of like got pissed off because, uh, you know, there's even though some of it's my competition that are out there doing it, he's like, he's uh, was, it's kind of crooked. Like you, you had set everything up, you know, it's kind of crap. And you're like, Hey, go ahead and bid and try to make money. That upsets me when somebody does that. And that's what a lot of these uh, non-lean units manager specials could potentially be, is somebody who knows exactly what's in there to make it look nice, and then you get sucked into it, and you just basically waste a lot of time and money. Well, they're off laughing to the bank, and that's not cool. Yeah, yep. But this uh, one has potential to me, because you see like mannequins, you see the little these little things here that were under the clothes. That's like mannequins. Somebody was a seller. It almost looks like a flea market seller though, because you see those are the little half ones that people yeah. then tend to hang on their tents. Yeah. And there's a bunch of them too. I guess, I guess staged wouldn't be the right word. What I meant was like, you know, positioned everything in the storage unit is really what I meant um, for the resale. Yeah. That's I a, that's interesting. That might as a, as a, as a I, I see this as a, a possible flea market vendor, somebody who's doing a uh, portable sales, like, and they have it just set up for easy put in their truck, put out of their truck without damaging it. Because I know the only time I ever really seen these type of uh, these type of mannequins are when I'm walking by the flea market and somebody has that little half body hanging from the top of their canopies. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. The really low end mannequin pieces, but yeah, that's not a bad deal for somebody if it stays under 140 bucks. There's a lot of money to be made on. I feel whenever they have these type, can you see where I'm pointing? Where with these have the photos with the doors closed? I feel like whenever they have them like that, there it, it automatically means the unit sucks, and that's why they don't want to show you a photo because they're scared if you look at it, you're just going to waste your time. Huh? I'm detoured from looking at the ones with the doors off. 
I got you. That's actually that looks like a pretty nice little cabinet or dresser right in the front. I mean, that's this, a jewelry box. Oh, that's a jewelry box. Yeah. Okay. Is that a tall jewelry box? That's interesting. And where the, the sides open up and then the top opens up and a little that's a no brainer. You have to gamble on jewelry boxes. Sure. The right price. You can't. What is the price on that? Two sixty for a twelve by twelve. Doesn't look like great, but it looks full. And if you're looking for inventory. I see a lot of just regular. The problem with I see in storage units is everybody's selling the same thing. If you go in every house in America, everybody has the same thing. They got a couch, a dining table, a living room set, uh, dishes, bedroom stuff. Like so, when you buy and sell stuff at these storage units, everybody's selling the same stuff, and you really want to, to monitor what it is you're going to be selling on that regular stuff. Because you're, if you're the guy selling the basic cups the basic picture at the flea market you're going to be overlooked by somebody having the little nicer one like a pure work pure one versus a target so i always see it's hard to get out of getting all these regular items like this like your like your pictures and your little pots and pans there but everybody is in the same in a, in this country has the same stuff in their house just a little different brand and I, I, it's hard when you're selling the same things every day. Like you buy a unit, you sell it all, and then you get the same type of stuff over and over. You really want to be picky of the condition of it. You want to – I had the, one of the wisest things somebody ever told me when I looked at a unit, and um, it was a friend of mine. He came to the auction with me one time, and he said it, it kind of registered in my brain, but he said the most important thing he would ever look at in a storage unit is the three things that people use the most on a daily basis, and that was – what their mattress looks like, what their kitchen look, or what their eating utensils look like, and what their shoes look like. And if you look at those things and how people took care of those, if they didn't take care of those three things, they probably didn't care about their life as much. And if oh, those right. things are well taken care of, 10 to 1, their stuff is at least clean and well taken care of. If their shoes aren't just torn up, if they're – see how you can see the front of the jewelry box there? I would definitely buy this unit right here just for the sake that there's a jewelry box and nothing else. But I yeah, see – They've got the they've got the drawers taped shut like there's something in it. Yeah, and you don't. It doesn't look like they've been tampered with. It looks like it's still sealed. You can see the plastic on the bottom. The bottom drawers is actually still melted into it and not cut. Yeah. That doesn't mean there's something in there though. You know how many people bought in storage units for a lot of money and there's absolutely nothing in that jewelry box. Oh yeah, I mean it's a gamble. It really is. I mean, I guess for me. You know, from what I've learned is you really want to kind of um, try and kind of monetize what you can see uh, with your bare eyes and make that somewhat like at least a close limit to your bid. You know, I would I would probably go at least seven hundred dollars on that unit if it was me and I'm standing in front of it and I could smell what the unit smells like and I see that it's a twelve by twelve, which is a I usually go a minimum of like ten dollars a square foot, but I don't think this is that super quality, so I probably wouldn't go like a thousand or twelve hundred. I, I I have a weird ways of looking at storage units by cubic volume and stuff, but I would at least spend seven hundred on that unit, at least. All right, um, guys in the chat, I just shared Jay Crafts Bolarama uh, YouTube. Uh, he has gracious, like I said, he graciously gave me the idea for this. Uh, this uh, this gig, um, this type of show, and I feel like it's only necessary and only right for me to um, give him a good shout out. Uh, Jay Craft is pretty much the news person uh, and the no the Mister No of everything eBay related, e commerce related, and on all the changes that they uh, that they go through. Uh, between the spring seller update and uh, update information and all that. So this guy. Jay Craft's a great dude. He's a good friend of mine, and he's always up to date on all the spiffy when it comes to resale. So definitely check his channel out and subscribe to him. Um, what are we looking at here? What is uh, that? This is an interesting little unit. I I don't see like tons of boxes, but I'm intrigued that the furniture looks quality. So the possibility of what's inside of the boxes makes it better. Except for I, I don't particle boards. One of my turnoffs. Right off the bat, I don't like particle board. Yeah. Pepper cell. Yeah. 
but that is a nice looking particle board bed frame there. You see the uh, little spindle, the little tri-leg table bases there for the dining table. You see what looks like nicer dining chairs. You don't see scuffs all over the legs. You don't see spill marks all over the seat. You see some nice high heels there. Random stiletto, just chilling. <laughs> looks, like a, looks like a Target rug. Like I was saying, remember the thing about the mattresses? See how the mattress looks clean, doesn't look stained. It doesn't look like somebody urinated on it. It doesn't look like it's been sitting in the house for 50 years. That's always a good sign. You see clean, if you see clean mattresses in a unit, like they look, nice and there's other stuff needed i would almost always try to buy the unit because it's when people take care of the thing they sleep on they're taking care of everything yeah something else that i think people would be interested in hearing is one thing, one thing that i look for uh is in like really full units um like i like seeing units that are packed to the brim because that tells me a couple of things it tells me that well of course you're going to get a lot of inventory good or bad, you're going to get a lot of whatever's in there. And for one, secondly, uh, you can rest assured if it's that packed full and it's not just like tossed in there, um, odds are highly likely that the, the owner of that storage unit did not go through and get the things that they felt were valuable before defaulting. Yeah, um, that is very true. The more full it is, the less chance they have. And like when you see a unit that's got an aisle down the middle of it, uh, that's better chances that somebody was easily to go in there and grab what they wanted. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay. Let's go to another, let's do another zip code here. Uh, I like that. my favorite thing to do on storage trade. I like to go look at like the top seven units that are going on in the country. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you could do, you can go, where's the top seven at? Let's do I think that. It's on the main page when you first go in. I'm not sure. Let me, let me just double check. But usually on the bottom of the first page, they might have done away with it. Or I don't know. I was oh, right. What's hot? I saw something that said what's hot. Like top options. I always like to go and just look at what people are going crazy over. It kind of oh, just oh, cracks wow. me up if you see $7, like. $7,500. Let's This unit's been going on every, every, like, I've seen this unit before. Really? Yeah, look at that. I've seen this unit a few times. It always pays up. I mean, I see Louis Vuitton, and I see a lot of just a, okay. This is a collector unit. It's pretty obvious there. Probably is actually an athlete's unit. Ch chances are. Okay. It's in. Uh, be surprised. Those are nice footballs. I would never in in a million years spend seventy five hundred on a unit like this because honestly, when I look at it, I feel like somebody has like eight good things and then they make a ton of money because it's all in the front and they staged it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it does. I don't, would you say that, would you assume that this is staged? I, I wouldn't assume it would, but you have to have a natural re I, I don't trust anything that I can't sit in front of and smell. Sure. And that's what I call when I look at a storage unit is like smelling the unit. Oh but yeah. The, those look like real Louis though, because you could tell by the dis the discoloration of the uh, of the leather there, and that could be a how big is this unit? Ten by twenty. That's a motives and roll, ne negatives and roll. That's a camera stuff. That's film probably. Huh. That's a decent unit, but I, that's how I like to look at these units like this that are uh, that are on the top list because it's kind of like it's interesting to see what people are willing to gamble on it kind of helps you sometimes want to make a a big gamble i would not go seven thousand five hundred on that unit and it's not even done it's still got 21 days to go uh jk said uh he smells the unit jeremy eats the unit that's the that's true <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that's hilarious i'll tell you what what is what kind of case is that? Is that look yeah, like, that's a, like a vintage guitar case? Yeah, it looks like kind of may, yeah, maybe like a classical guitar case or something. One would hope it's like a Gibson or something. Oh, right. No that's Gibson. what I would be hoping for. Oh, yeah. Some of those vintage Gibsons go for a lot of money. Is that uh, is that artwork or, or just? I'm looking. It looks like uh, somebody's selling art. 
Looks like there's a lot of pieces of art. That's not just somebody putting all those pieces on their wall. They're creating art. That's very common in storage units to get an artist's unit. Wow. And those do not ever tend to work out too well because it's usually not a very famous artist you're getting. Right. Did you, have, did you have another zip code of mine you want to try? Uh, yeah, yeah. 64063. 64063. Let me type it. 64063. And it just doesn't matter how many miles. Yeah. Uh, see what we got. Where are we at? Where is this in Missouri? Kansas City, North Dakota, or Maryland? I can't see. It says Kansas City, Missouri. Oh, okay, Kansas City, Missouri. All right. I like little units because they're easy. I, I used to buy all lots of big units, but I start. It's, there's so much bigger stuff in, in bigger units and little units if you can get them at a good price they tend to have a faster quicker reward because it's faster to move saves you a lot of time yeah if you get the right ones they're chock full of treasure but like like what's this unit at ten dollars like if if i would buy this unit for 10 bucks just because i feel there's got to be at least 50 to 100 bucks in there and if i bought like five of those in a day that becomes a decent flea market load but I wouldn't go crazy. I wouldn't spend like 50 or 75 bucks on a unit like that because there's so many units that look just like this. But I'd almost buy any unit in the world for 10 bucks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Have you, just out of curiosity, have you ever purchased a storage unit that to most people would look like just bags of trash? I, I do it all the time. I, I, I even I'll, I'll some days I'll buy like a unit for four grand and I'll buy the work the unit that nobody wanted like I, I do it on purpose because a lot of people copy me in my area a lot of people think because I'm bidding I'm like I know it's in there um, I I don't know what it is but I feel like people they want to either outdo me or they want to know why I'm doing it so I'll buy if they have a no sale I'll turn around and give them a dollar for it just so people can't figure out what the heck I'm doing they laugh yeah. at me. I can't believe you bought that for a dollar. I'm like, me neither, but whatever. You can't. I, you, you have to be able to throw people off their scent. Dude, you could probably take all the all the um, the aluminum cans out of that trashy storage unit and make more than a dollar from it. So, uh, it's, it's very possible. Like, I've never lost on a dollar unit. I've never in my entire business had any of my losses come from a dollar unit or a five dollar unit. This unit here looks like a stager, like a complete stager. They were just had a business. That's what I see right off the bat. All this house type decor stuff and boxes and things. Yeah. I presume it's a stager. Bought in a lot of staging units in my in my storage career. They're never really huge items of profit in there, but if you get them right, it's all just sellable household stuff that people want to decor decorate their house with. But for some reason, I feel like it's a staging type unit. Could be wrong. Yeah, like staging houses for sale and stuff. Yeah, that's what I just what I get off the bat when I see the front of this unit. I see like this items that would go around the house, and that's the boxes of their fake, their fake little plants and vases and stuff they set up when they stage a home. But I can't tell without seeing deeper into the unit. It just looks like like that looks like a table underneath those like that's wrapped up with the the shrink wrap around it, and there's a pad there, and then you got your pet. It just seems like to me what I see is a staging unit. Like somebody yeah. has a business and they just put everything in storage. Actually, there's like a pod or a, a container. It doesn't even look like a storage unit. Yeah. I've actually, uh, there was a unit that ended a couple of days ago that looked a lot like that. Um, I actually, I was watching it because I wasn't for certain. I thought about buying it, but there was a lot of, a whole lot of home decor. And I just don't, I don't think that home decor is something that, uh, it really merits a lot of money. So I I would buy a unit like this for e I would easily spend five hundred on an eight by nineteen like this because you're gonna get at least two full trailer loads and you see nothing but sellable stuff. I mean it doesn't seem like I don't see like hey there's a thousand dollar item, but I see five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty five dollar bills. There's several of them. So I would definitely buy a unit like this for the right price. Probably if I said 500, which means I'd probably get sucked into bidding about 750 because I tend to hang on to a unit more than I probably should have when I'm bidding. Yeah. Well, 
guys, when you're buying storage units from storagetreasures.com, you have to also remember that you have, uh, depending on if you're a, uh, a pro member or not on storage treasures, you're going to have either a 10% for member or 15% for non-member um, fee. And then also you'll have a, a deposit. Of course, that deposit gets, um, you get refunded after you clean out the unit as long as you clean it out within the specified time frame. Um, also, you know, if you're not tax exempt, you'll also have the taxes on top of that. So for me, I'm not tax exempt. So I pay taxes on the purchase of this store, uh, these storage units. So I'm looking at 20% more on top of, uh, on top of my final bid. So, but if you're buying like more than one unit a month on there, or you're buying expensive units, you should have the extra, the extra discount on the, the buyer's premium. It's worth it to save that 5% if you're buying any amount of units on a regular basis there. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. This almost looks like a decent little unit for eight, for a uh, eight by 10, but like for me in my area, like if I was to sell these crock pots at the flea market, I'm realistically, I'm only getting 10 bucks a piece tops for those. Sure. That's the way my market works. Like I, supply and demand works both ways. And there's a lot of people selling these same things. So trying to get a fair amount of money, even though it's in the box doesn't work unless I'm putting it on eBay. And I generally wouldn't ship a crock pot on eBay. Granted, I probably should because I'd make more money, but. That's the type of thing that I just take to the market and I sell really, really fast to get out and buy another one. Cause like I said, I want to look, I want to look in that trunk right there. That's the type of thing. Like now I'm going to buy that unit cause I see the trunk and trunks are definitely on my list of turn ons. Eight by 10, I would easily probably spend two or 300 on that unit just cause I want to see in that trunk and not because I really like anything else in this unit. But I feel like trunks are like poor man safes and you just never know what that trunk was. It was a military trunk. Was it mom's sewing stuff trunk? Was it grandma's? I'm keeping my silver and jewelry in the trunk. Definitely would buy that. Yep. That's a, that's a pretty packed unit. Looks like. For and for eight by ten, it looks like it's probably that's the last wall though. It's hard to say, but th if you look at, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just one wall at the back. Like the TV goes and probably touches the wall, and that cabinet's against the back wall. Maybe another look, another layer. I would, like I said, I would spend two or three hundred on that just because the trunk. But I'm not really impressed with all the other things. That kind of golf ball lamp's pretty cool though. Kind of looks like a golf ball pattern, different. Suitcases are clean looking, but suitcases are only like, that's like a $10 sale at my flea market. Nice. Right. This number. Okay, we're gonna do, uh, what uh, What zipper were we on just now? Uh, 64063, let's do 94531. Nine four five three one. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's this will probably uh, be our last zip of the night. That must have been uh, my good friend Hustlin' the Hustlers who typed that zip code, and I bet I bet money because that's his area. There's some intriguing units by us here. This is all by me, actually. But see, like personally for me, like this is actually in my area within driving distance, but I don't like this facility because I have bad vibes about them and my experience of when they used to be uh, a, a live auction. That type, this type of unit, this is looks like totally like somebody did a dump run and took a bunch of stuff and decided oh. they weren't going to pay there. But look at that. All that hazardous chemicals, which is basically a, a negative if you don't have a place to drop them. Oh, yeah, for sure. One tool in the front right there of some form. Looks like maybe DeVault. It looks like, yeah, like a saw, like a scroll saw almost. 
I'm not really a tool guy. That's one of my least favorite things to sell at the flea market because I feel like everybody at the flea market is trying to sell tools. And I try my best to sell something that not everybody has in in their booth because that, that's what's going to draw people to want to buy your stuff more. I'd have to buy this unit right off the bat. It's a three by 10 with almost nothing in it, but there's a safe and the safe's automatically going to drive the price of that unit up. Yeah. I'm curious. What, what is the price, the current price and how long does it have? This is a three by 10, which is like one of the most smallest possible units. Anything that says three by anything in a storage unit, small at 210 bucks, 30 square foot to 210. How, how long does it have to go? 13 hours these are all ending tomorrow oh wow but it looks very business like you see the bankers boxes what kind of throws me off like the skill saw next to a safe like that like i would i i, I would buy this for a cheap price but i think this is already over what i would pay but this is the type of price that you see in my area. Like I said, this this town is like 30 minutes from me right here, Oakley. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I actually lucked out. There were a whole bunch of banker boxes in the, my most recent storage unit. And fortunately, it wasn't a whole bunch of paperwork. Uh, banker boxes actually make for really good storage boxes, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, I've gotten some good units with banker's box but if you look at these every one of these boxes in here it looks like total nothing in there and i'm shocked it's going for the price it is you don't even see nothing in the holes there oh Those i do that top one at least this uh, one? yeah there's stuff in there you can see it hmm. now what that stuff is it looks, like, it looks like a shirt and a part of a three ring binder to me it's kind of like the way my eyes see it yeah like sleeve of a shirt and then like the metal part that holds like a paper and a binder but now, the price uh, of that unit's a lot that's in my yeah. opinion it's kind of high because you still got 13 hours left so you know that's going to go for money and like i said this place to me is uh i don't tr trust that facility and here we go with their non-lean unit manager special that's at already 90 bucks that's not too bad for a lean special I will buy a manager special because I always believe that not everybody knows what they're looking for. So you can get lucky in a unit that's a, a manager special because they're generally naturally looking for gold and silver. You know, they're not looking for things that we know are valuable, but the average person doesn't per se. So I will buy a manager special for cheap. Like this unit right here, like I see, like in my flea market, that washer and dryer is 40 bucks. That little basketball thing is like five bucks. You start adding up that. If you got that unit for, what is it at now, 90? Like I would pay a hundred bucks for this in person, even though I knew it was a manager special. I just see all things that I can liquidate, garbage cans, clothes. I can I can have a dollar sale with this damn near and, and do and make money if it's to the right price. I'll buy this for like a hundred bucks. I wouldn't spend a lot more, but. Yeah. See. Huh ipad box there like you're going to be in you're going to be intrigued to buy it because it has an ipad box there yeah i'd see now i'm under the impression that manager specials are really just a conglomeration of several other units that have went up for auction but never sold and yeah I, honestly i don't well we're still in the same facility and now we're on the what i see is their second manager special and that kind of makes me like how do you have two manager special units this month right because i i i know there's facilities that are crooked especially in my area which like i i don't go to this place ever because i feel they are crooked mm. i've been to this place for years and there was rumors when i first started about this this is a this to me is like definitely a tweaker unit probably empty cases that's what i'm gonna presume when i see you know like this and i see buckets and i see kitty litter boxes or whatever with words written on it and i see that i automatically presume tweaker i automatically resume somebody who has taken apart their tools and stuff like that that's what i the way i look at a unit like this hey uh shout out to trevor stewart from ireland trevor i have read your comments brother thank you so much um for commenting uh 
uh, on that, uh, that gold, uh, that gold video of mine, he requested that I talk to you about that. I've already sold the gold Trevor, but, uh, he said that, uh, that you actually buy gold. Is that right? Do you buy gold? Uh, storage auction pirate. Oh, do I buy gold? Yeah. I, do you buy gold? I don't really buy gold. I just sell it. Like I, I, I like gold that I wear, but I'm not really like one to buy gold and hoard it or try to resell it because um, uh, this is not something I, I generally do. Sure, sure. No, no, Trevor. I guess Trevor was under the impression that you purchase gold uh, um, to to resell. So he he suggested that I hit you up with it, but. The, the fortunate thing for me is it's uh I've already sold it, so I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> I have a lot of, of gold buyers that um, buy gold off me on a regular basis. But, like, yeah, I, I don't really save it myself. But I generally, the way I have to run my business is I'm kind of a really quick seller because I'm trying to work that chunk of money I have to turn it over and over and over again. To, oh, okay. With the cost of living around here plus the cost of what it takes to buy a storage unit. Okay. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he, he corrected me. He said he was saying that he, he has a guy who buys gold. So yeah. Oh uh, yeah. I guess I got some, I think I got 80% of spot. So I felt decent on mine. I mean, it's not 90 or 95%, which is some people have that connection. I just simply don't. So I, I have a few people that will pay 90% all day long for, for gold. That's good. That's good. 10% goes a long ways when you're dealing with volume. I'm blown away by how many this place has on a manager special. Like I wouldn't buy this unit either. No, I don't think I would pay it. What's this one at 70? I definitely wouldn't pay that type of bid, even though you see sellable stuff. Cause I VCR tapes to me are one of the toughest sales. Yeah. Yeah. Cheap things. I would, I, I get frustrated with place like you should not have that many lean sales. There, there's no way you should have that many uh i mean uh manager specials now we now we have uh they actually have a regular one 40 bucks 10 by 15 looks like a business right off the bat is it is it ending pretty soon because this might actually be a unit that you could snipe for a decent amount uh this was one i probably actually i'm trying to see the photos because I, I this ends tomorrow and i'm out of stuff to sell so i'm i'm actually <laughs> in my area right now that's funny. Uh, storage auction pirate sourcing 101 live on the Thrift Trader YouTube channel tonight. <laughs> this it looks like a business to me. You see all the banker box. You see, but there's a look like file cabinets, and you've seen that. You seen the right off of here the home for sale. You see some chairs. You see this type of stuff that's got paperwork in it. But then again, it looks like there's a clock right there behind the paper and oh, the phone. Got box. That curved edge to it a little bit like a tabletop radio you put the little tape player in and it's made to look like a jukebox yeah yeah then you get your dollar store aluminum foil things i could use those cooking around the house yeah some of this stuff looks kind of old you have the uh what's that thing called the total gym you could usually get 25 to 75 bucks for total gym on craigslist yeah i think i see a wooden rocking chair there in the middle yeah, you see a rock. Feel, don't you feel like the unit no, is not showing the right half? Oh, there it is. It's got a mattress on the middle of it. Oh, right down the middle. Hmm. So what I like about business units or something, if it is a half business, a manager's less apt. There's a DeWalt case right there for your skill saw. The managers are less to have to go in a unit that is business like. Oh, you see some family photos. This is like a probably a half and half unit. Yeah. And the average person in my area doesn't want to fuss with paperwork and businesses and they'll probably be turned off by this. There is, is a smacker, garbage can. Yeah, there's books underneath it. I don't have the best of luck with books. I'm, I talk, I'm not one of those people who's, who Google everything I find and that's not exactly the best strategy. I should be looking up a lot of books. I had somebody one time try to tell me they watched me throw away a twelve thousand dollar book in my video. I know they were just being jerks, but uh, well, I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a twelve thousand dollar book, but I have sold books for close to a couple hundred bucks before. Believe it or not, 
Oh, I believe it. There was a unit here last year somewhere around here that nobody wanted. And the guy that I know picked it up for 20 bucks and he did like 200 grand in books at an auction house. And that's a good come up from $20 to uh, like 200 grand. Oh, yeah. I, I, I might actually, and might possibly bid on that unit. I have to double, I'm going to think about that one. I, I can't tell, but that looks like all paperwork up there. See, you even see the word files on there? Yeah. That one says like left. It looks like it says left rugs, but I can't quite read it. I might actually have to buy this one and we could see a reveal about it one day soon. Oh, that'd be awesome. That'd I be have awesome. to check my auctions tomorrow, but I'm definitely out of stuff. And that's weird. All these, all these facilities, I'm pretty sure last auction run were not on storage treasures. I think that the manager, the guy who did these auctions is retiring. So they're not putting the, doing the auctions for these facilities in person anymore. There's Marilyn Monroe. Could be wrong. Marilyn's nice. I, I, I collect Marilyn things. I have like a, a picture of her in my bedroom actually, but this looks like a lot of furniture here. Somebody was eating the side of their headboard when they were hungry at night. <laughs> Decent looking office chairs almost, but then uh, the bottom looks kind of weird. Uh, they're, really? uh, this is the way I look like. See what I'm talking about once they don't take care of this stuff? See how the feet on the plastic of the treadmill is already like, like, I don't know what they're doing. They were chain smoking and it's all full of ashes while they were running on their treadmill or their exercise bike. But that looks very, you shouldn't see that on your bike. That was, those are the type of things that turn me off of buying some because you're going to presume that everything that they might have had is completely beaten up yeah i mean shoot for all we know they could have been gnawing on a bag of chips while they were running on the treadmill and that's just chip crumbs who knows yeah and then you see the bottom drawer on the top right there there's two drawers on top of each other and the bottom one's missing the, the uh knob that's not a good sign i would not buy that unit whatsoever that looks like i'm going to the dumps Ooh, there's a let's look at that one there. This one looks more intriguing. I saw that out the corner of my eye. This unit here looks intriguing. Almost. I'm really weird about writing on boxes, and I, I look at when people write on totes, that kind of throws me off. I don't think you should write on totes, but I kind of uh, what are those pumpkins? I don't that may be supposed to say pumpkins, maybe. I could be wrong. Huh. But I like this. I see those little tables right there painted. I see. A nice little table there. I see baskets. This is the type of unit I'd definitely be all over. Yeah, there's a longer uh, – that could be a longer burger basket. That uh, – what's inside that basket? You think that's uh, metal? I mean, we can is get that a, a metal, metal canister inside that basket there? A photo of it here. That right there? Yeah, I'm curious. It looks like, a, uh, it looks like a, a Pier 1 Imports replica of like a fancy trunk, like a little chest. Oh, darn. That's what I see it as. That doesn't mean that that's necessarily right. That's like a couch under there, a chair. Uh, always expect to, uh, expect the worst and hope for the best. It's the safest bet if you don't want to go throwing around money. Their yeah. Christmas stuff is okay. LED, that's a good sign. If they're having LED Christmas ornaments, that means that they uh, have newer items and they were at the store more recently because it LED was not super big several years ago. KitchenAid's an okay brand. I kind of like this unit. I hope my competition's not watching this interview right now fitting to bid me up tonight. So I might bid on this one too. I like that. I like the little, the, I like the quality of things in a unit like this. I just like the way things are taken care of. Like these right here, that, that makes me think of a, a, I automatically presume this is kind of an older woman's unit. The way that the the motif is, that's what my mind's going to tell me. And an older woman would tend to want to have jewelry, and I'm always looking for jewelry. I like I like Christmas stuff, and I like the cleanliness of this unit. I would definitely buy this. What is it at five thirty? That is kind of. Uh, I would definitely pay five thirty for this. The problem with the units like this is I can't see back in that corner with the photos and I want to see better detail if that's all boxes or if that's like a big entertainment center on the left and I'm not able to see down there. It kind of looks like a, a, a dining chair right there under the tote upside down. 
Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. But that's the type of ant that I would buy. I like these clean units where the boxes look clean. You see a china hutch there. China hutches or glass front cabinets to me usually represent they've collected something. Who knows what it was? It could have been Pez dispensers or it could have been china. Like you don't know really what it could be Yadro, it could be all sorts of things, but they collected something. You see glass, glass on all the boxes, kitchen glass, glass. So there's 10 to one there was but if you really think about it, these all these pieces that look intriguing, they're not expensive. They're not like high-end house decor. Sofa chair type thing right there looks almost decent. But yeah, I would definitely bid on that unit for for about that. Probably top out at about seven hundred dollars on something like that too, maybe eight hundred with a peer, but it's be a peer gamble. Whether they had something of stream value to help circumvent paying that much. I notice it. I don't know how it is in markets in other places around the country, but it isn't the easiest thing to just sell things around here because there's so many people selling stuff. So it's like you really got to watch what you pay for stuff to, because I like to be the cheaper seller at the market. I like to be the person who's going to for sure sell their stuff at the market. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know if that's. Yeah. Uh, I can I hear that kind of now too in Utah. Huh. I don't know what's ca what's causing that. All right. Let me see here. Well, we're nearing we're nearing two hours here, Mikey. So I think we should probably get back to that that hot pink mohawk ears and and tell everybody goodbye pretty right. soon. Is that on the right screen now? Uh, almost. I think you're you're still screen sharing, so you'll have to stop the screen share. There we go. This is all new to me. Uh, brother, you gotta start somewhere. Gotta start somewhere. Uh, guys, you you have any last questions? Uh, for for Michael before we uh before we get back to this. So um, honestly, guys. Uh, seriously, subscribe to Michael's YouTube channel, Storage Auction Pirate. Dude's got uh, dude's got a lot of a lot of great content. Um, you have that you have that video of, of you uh, cracking into that safe with twenty six thousand dollars, don't you? Um, uh, there is a safe a video on my channel with the safe. Uh, that's probably I think the premier video on my channel. Not to mention I still have the safe in my I keep the safe in my bedroom. It's my garbage can, and I have like a <laughs> lid for it hangs on my shelf in my living room with all my neat finds that I have. That's really cool. I mean, I think I think the coolest thing about buying storage units is yeah, you you never know what you're gonna get, and and you get keepsakes left and right. I mean, it's I'm sure you probably keep things from almost every storage unit you buy, don't you? I keep random things that have like one of my favorite finds ever. I have is a human skull. I keep that in my living room. It hangs on my shelf. And I found that in a unit that had the huge Nazi collection that I found one time. And there was a skull in there. So it was a medical skull. It had the words on it. And so I've, I've always kept it. Um, uh, I Right now, I'm seeming to be collecting creme cremated remains because I'm having a problem with people ever coming to pick them up. So I have like a, a slew of what I now call my family, which is all these cremated remains. I keep weird things, like something that has some significance memory to me like i have a sign in my living room that is from the worst unit that i bought ever which is a reminder of how bad this business could be yeah i think uh i'm dealing with that too right now mike is uh um the other day we were just going through a few things in the shop because like the first couple of storage units i bought like i just we just got all the stuff out of the storage unit and brought it into my shop building and we just set it aside and we we just finally got around to going through some of the stuff and my 80 year old grandfather was with me we, i call him papa so everybody on my channel calls him papa he's 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 a good one of my absolute most favorite people in life and uh we were just digging through stuff and he said he said jason i found somebody i was like what do you mean what are you talking about like i was on the other end of the shop doing like sorting trash and and stuff like that and he said no i found somebody 
I was like, okay. So I went over there and it was, it was an urn and, uh, uh, full of, uh, ashes. And I'm dealing with that right now. So I've actually called and left a voicemail with the district manager of the storage, uh, the storage facility. I don't know if I'll hear back from them or not. If I don't, um, I'll probably end up taking it to a funeral home, see if uh, the nearest funeral home and see if there's anything that they can do. Um, if not, um, I don't know. We'll just have to cross that bridge when we get there. A lot of funeral homes where I am, they won't take them. The cremation places, the funeral homes. Like I had one place re recently, the lady tried to tell me to throw them away. There was six, a box with six of them. I think a couple were animals and a couple were family members. She told me to throw them away. The manager did. Like literally, I was like, ma'am, I'm not throwing away. I, that's why I have, I have 16 of them right now. And that's like, I'm collecting them, but uh, yeah. there's worse things. I, my worst storage unit ever, uh, sometimes even hard to even talk about, but I bought a unit one time where they was almost 30 baby fetuses in garbage cans before. And there, this business could have some really weird things that happen. That unit was, um, there's, I, I have a video on my channel about it actually. Well, there's wow. a video for the worst storage unit I ever bought. I had to turn it back over to public storage. I was like, I'm not, I'm not touching this unit. It was a VD clinic. Oh, wow. And in yeah. California, it's called medical waste, so it's not even illegal. It's just classified as medical waste. That's, wow. Um, that yeah, unit I mean, my life, basically. I'd never seen nothing like that. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, at the end of the day, guys, when you buy a storage unit, the sky's the limit. The good, the bad, the ugly, anything can be found. Yeah. Anything. I mean, literally anything. I mean, I wouldn't put it past someone finding a, a, a murdered person in a storage unit at one point or another. I'm sure it's probably happened. So. Oh, yes, yeah, I've heard of that happen a few times. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that day. Hopefully it never happens to me, but, you know, it that there's always... I wouldn't, I wouldn't even call it an opportunity. There's always that chance. <laughs> you have to prepare yourself for the potential worst, but you don't ever want to say, you don't want to think that it's not going to, because that kind of brings it to life when you don't want to just think of what you want. Oh yeah. yeah. What you want to find. Focus more on gold coins and silver bars and paintings, not uh, the bad, the good, the bad, like the bad and the ugly part. Let's not think about that. Yeah. Think about $26,000 in a safe. Yes. Or that's that's what you think about and it, it, uh, that's what we're in it for guys so um thank you guys so much for joining us before we lose a bunch of people i do have an announcement next thursday night uh at 10 p.m central so an hour later than the last two thursday night shows we've got treasure hunting with jeebus coming on and we're going to have an exclusive interview with those two kids and it's uh it's going to be a lot of fun uh, this has been an absolute blast. Uh, thank you so much, Michael, uh, for for being here with me. I hope you had as much fun as I did. It's uh, it's been a pleasure. Oh, this was awesome. I've my, never done this before, and I had a lot of fun. It was nice doing this. Oh, for sure, brother. Now, uh, do you have uh, maybe any last words for our our, uh, our viewers tonight? Um, I just want to say uh, thanks for watching this video and uh, enjoying me being here talking with Thrift Trader. I really appreciate it. Um, if you all are interested, if you don't subscribe to my channel, please go check it out. We are, uh, we put out a lot of videos. Um, I really enjoy doing what I do, whether it's the toughest time of my life or the best time of my life. I buy storage units. I breathe storage units. It's, it's what I love to do. So if you want to check it out, check it out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Guys, the, uh, the link to his uh, YouTube channel, I just threw it in chat a few times. Uh, it's also going to be in the description of this video. So guys, please, if you're not subscribed, go and do it. Um, but uh, I guess that's going to conclude the night, guys. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, we'll see you next time. And until next time, keep on picking that trash and making that cash. You guys have a good night.